A surging lawnmower is something that can be easily fixed at home without the need for any specialist tools. Of course, in the process, you're going to save yourself time because you don't have to take the mower to the shop come and collect it and wait weeks for them to get round to repairing it. And money too. It can be expensive for a mechanic to diagnose a surging issue and it's something that you could easily do yourself. And I hope that through watching this video and being able to repair this problem yourself will give you the confidence to address other issues that you might come across. In today's video we're going to cover what surging is, what causes it and of course then how to fix it. Surging is a consistent repetitive fluctuation of an engine fitted with a governor and it happens when there's an incorrect air to fuel ratio. There is either too little fuel or too much air getting to the engine and the governor is constantly trying to chase itself to maintain that set RPM. And this is what an engine sounds like when it's surging on this lawnmower that I've got behind me. The causes of surging can be quite broad and we're going to cover each and every possibility today. It could be that you have stale fuel, it could be that you've got a blocked fuel filter, there could be water both in your fuel tank or your carburetor, you might have a damaged or cracked fuel line, a blockage in the carb or if your carburetor runs diaphragms it can be a stiff diaphragm, you could have a damaged intake gasket, damaged or cracked intake manifold and lastly a blocked fuel tank vent. And I don't know why this engine is surging, so we really are going through this the first time together. And you can follow along at home, of course, with your, your mower at the same time. First thing, fuel. Is it stale? How old is it? If you're unsure, swap it out and put some fresh fuel in there. And while doing so, I'm going to place the fuel tank cap back on to check that the duckbill valve is actually working correctly. So first we'll remove this little clip, slide it up out of the way. We'll pinch the fuel line next and then I'll pop it off. Up it comes. So straight away I can see that the fuel is red which could either be because it's two stroke mix that someone put in there accidentally or that it's got some stabilizer but far too much of it and we have really good flow through the fuel hose and thus we know that the fuel tank filter is doing really well and of course we know that we haven't got an issue with the tank vent as well that it's venting properly. So in this case I could just put in some more fuel and give it another go. However because this engine's going to be sold, I don't like to send them out without a carburetor clean anyway. We know that the fuel tank system's good. We know that the fuel line is good. It's not leaking. It hasn't got any holes in it. So now we're going to move on to the carburetor. And as we're looking at the carburetor, we're going to check gaskets, intake manifold, float height, dirty carburetors, and water in the carburetor bowl itself. To get this particular carburetor off, this is on a Briggs & Stratton E-Series engine. They're a plastic carburetor. I'm going to take the cowling off going to make it easier for you and easier for me as well. That will now just slip up and off. The fuel tank slips up and off and now we can get to our linkages. So we'll take the air filter off, we'll take the housing that holds the air filter off, we'll now remove the PCV tube, air filter housing, and then we've just got some linkages that we have to undo. I've got videos on cleaning all the different types of carburetors, so you can check through the channel and find those if this is not the carburetor that you're working on. In this case, I'm going to just gently slide it forwards, unhook the governor linkage. And we mentioned about the intake manifold. On this carburetor, it's plastic. Double check that yours hasn't got any visible cracks or damage. Or if, like in this case, this carburetor has a little black o-ring in here, then make sure that that's present as well. On this carburetor, the float bowl is held on by two of these little bolts. So we'll remove those, and then we'll prise away the float bowl. So, have a look at this. Can you see that there's a little puddle of water in there? That could very well be the cause of why this is surging. Or at the very least, it's not good to have in there. We're going to have to make sure that we remove that. Well, there's the water, those little bubbles. So that's not good. And also, you might be able to see that there is a little bit of dirt and debris in there as well. And that is not going to help anything either. So we're going to dispose of that. 
And now what we'll do is remove this little pin. It will be the same in your carburetor, and it holds the float in position. In this case, I just gently pop it up, and the float will come out. Bear in mind what orientation your float goes back in. There'll also be a needle. I'm going to have a quick look at that needle. Besides that small hair on there, which is only going to let more fuel in rather than less, doesn't look too bad. There's a small ridge that's starting to form, and that's just something to bear in mind. There's no need to replace this now. It's not our problem. And while we're inside here, I'm just going to check the needle seat. Now, of course, this isn't the issue that we're running into, but it is good to know, just for future, about any possible causes that could occur with running symptoms. The next thing we're going to do is pull this cartridge out. There's an O-ring in here, which we want to check, and it also is where the fuel is supplied both to the low and the high speed side of the carburetor. I'm going to gently try and prise up. So this jet here is a main jet, and it supplies fuel to both the pilot drilling and also when the engine's under full load, full throttle, and it looks nice and clear. We can actually separate this cartridge into two pieces, and we can see the emulsion tube here and the drillings for it, they look clean. And this is an air jet and it meters the amount of air that can go through the emulsion tube to mix with the fuel supply for full throttle, full load operation. I believe the engine is surging for only one of two reasons. It could have been the water that we found, but I think more likely it's actually that the pilot jet drilling is a little bit too small. It is clear, but remember surging is just a slight change in fuel to air ratio. It's not an extreme change. Therefore, what I'm going to do is make this a little bit bigger because these are known for not supplying much fuel and hopefully that will fix our problem. I've got one of these sets of micro drill bits and a little hand drill and you have to be so careful. The jet is actually hardened. It's much harder than what you'd expect. So going slowly, really slowly and really carefully. If the drill bit bites, then uh, bring it back out and go back in again. I'm going to find a drill bit that fits in there and then just go up one more size. You can see just how fine these drill bits are. That one's starting to bind. I'm going to go with this size. This is a 0 0.35. You have to be so slow, so careful. Now it's starting to go in a little bit easier. So I'm going to go up a couple more sizes because I still think this is too small. So drilling out the pilot jet is just one of the problems that can be causing a lean symptom. The other one is if you look through here, you've got that little brass drilling. That is an air drilling. Air will come through that drilling along this horizontal chamber and it will pick up fuel from this vertical chamber here and it will actually draw up fuel through your pilot jet. Together, the fuel and air will go in behind this Welsh plug here, and it will come out, in this case, of four drillings. You've got an idle drilling and then progressive idle drillings behind it. Can you see those there? If any one of those are blocked, if there's blockages in this system, then that can cause you lean symptoms as well. So we're going to clean that out at the same time. We're going to shoot some brake cleaner through there and through that drilling that goes up into that circuit. So I'm going to spray some brake cleaner into that air drilling here, and it should come out of the bottom there, which it is. That's good. And now I'm going to have a look onto the intake, which is going to be very hard for you. I'm going to see if I can see four streams coming out. It's very hard to see, but all four of those channels are shooting out, so we know that they're clear as well. They're working as they should. That means that the pilot circuit is now working. It's nice and clear. And I think when we get this engine back together, it should be running really nice without that surging. And I'm just cleaning out now the cartridge. And I'll blow that out with compressed air as well. So now all that's left to do is to reassemble it. And I'm going to oil the O-rings. Doesn't matter what oil you use, this just so happens to be two-stroke oil, but you can use normal engine oil. It just eases it to go back into the cartridge like so. 
the float, needle and pin. That slips in there. Float height is good. The bolt goes on next. Just double check that the pickup is actually picking up from the side. And that's now ready to go back onto the engine and we'll see if that's fixed it. So the linkage goes on. Such a simple carburetor. That gets pressed on all the way. Fuel tank is next, and of course the fuel line as well. Line those up at the same time. Air filter goes back on. Cowling goes back on. We're going to move the clip across onto the barb of the carburetor. And of course this engine is very new, but I've got this video here which is going to cover everything you need to know about servicing and repairing a Briggs & Stratton flathead. And they were the most common engines that you would find in the 70s, 80s and 90s on all of your small outdoor power equipment. I hope it helps. Until next time, I'll catch you soon.